Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist uh, Zoom training, if you will, Luxury Lunch and Learn podcast. My, I'm your host, Michael Lafito. I'm really excited about today's guest. Uh, before I introduce uh, our guest, just a reminder, we post replays of our previous Luxury Lunch and Learns and our previous shows on, on our Marketing Luxury Group or you could uh, YouTube channel, or you can just go to Luxury Lunch and Learn Dot com and that will redirect you over to our YouTube channel where you can see the replays. This is our 47th Luxury Lunch and Learn. I'm really excited to bring today's guest on. I uh, met him a few years back at uh, various conferences we've seen each other at. And uh, again, I bring on guests that uh, bring value, they contribute, they walk the walk. And uh, today's guest is, uh, I guess, defines that, if you will. He's Mr. Luxury in North Carolina. Uh, with that, without further ado, I got my good friend John Mark Mitchell uh, with it. Mitchell Fine Properties, uh, Prime Properties. Mitchell, Mitchell Prime Properties. Prime, yeah, yeah, Prime, yeah. Prime. Fine, it's fine, Prime, it's everything. Prime. Yeah, Fine <laughs> Prime. That's right. Uh, luxury, whatever Not you want to call. Um, <laughs> That's it. Mitchell Prime Properties uh, in in Winston Salem. Uh, it's Charlotte. You guys cover. What are the areas you guys cover? We're a little bit over um, all of North Carolina. We, uh, our main headquarters is in Winston-Salem. And of course, that's my hometown. I absolutely love it here. In fact, it's 80 degrees here today. It's, it's incredible. Sunny. Michael, you got to move down here. You got to move down to the south, you know? But um, <laughs> yeah, we you don't have to convince me. Okay. <laughs> we cover, uh, we have agents in the mountains and the high country. We have them on the Crystal Coast. Uh, we have uh, agents in Raleigh and Charlotte. Um, so it's, it's, it's all over, but uh, we certainly love promoting North Carolina and, and welcoming people to this beautiful state. And you got one of the best logos in real estate. I see it in the backdrop there, the, the lion, the lion. Oh, yeah. Um, so we got to... tell us a little bit about Mitchell Prime Properties first off. And, um, you know, I know you were an agent under a, a firm before, but this is, this is your brokerage. Um, you're the owner, mm -hmm. the founder, right? Correct. Correct. Um, you know, I uh, had been in real estate for quite a while. Absolutely loved this business. It was kind of a detour from uh, going into law school and um, jumped in it, loved everything about it and um, started uh, doing uh, setting goals and then reaching them and enjoying uh, the service that I provided for people. And um, fast forward, I was a top producer with a company, went with a, a smaller kind of uh, a boutique firm that was 80 years old in the triad and learned a lot from them. And then they sold out to a franchise uh, about 2010, uh, 2011, I got involved in a kind of a cloud-based company because I wanted to know more about uh, the technology of that and how that was working and where our future is in this business. And then uh, from there, about three years later, and on April Fool's Day, if you understand my sense of humor, I had to open up on April Fool's Day in 2014. Really? Uh, we wanted to have a luxury uh, company uh, that was something a little bit unique, uh, something uh, that would be um, that we needed actually in North Carolina and especially in the triad area of North Carolina. And um, and then the rest is history. We've just kind of we've kind of grown from there uh, a little bit about our logo. Uh, I chose the lion because I um, I wanted it to be something that uh, people could uh, realize had a soul to it, that had uh, had something that people could uh, gravitate toward and feel a little bit more passion for. Um, the line also is for integrity and, and honesty and and um, also uh, it's a very proud animal. It's also one of the first animals that uh, a lot of people as children, you know, they recognize other than the cat and the dog and then the lion. And so uh, in picking the lion, it was kind of like a thing that I wanted to um, uh, showcase that uh, people can see a lion on the prairies of Africa and they say that's a lion and then they can see a lion in a cage at the zoo and they say that's a lion and to most people uh, to most children if you will it's the lion is the same the only thing that's different is how the lion feels about themselves and so I wanted to kind of get out of that cage out of that uh, corporate uh, feel of being fed, if you will, and wanted to step out and, uh, and move out on my own and has been uh, very rewarding. And, uh, and it's made a lot of great um, occupations for a lot of people. And we thoroughly, thoroughly have enjoyed it. 
Well, th thanks for the, the history and the thought process going into a logo. <laughs> um, you know, you're a member, I'm a member of Who's Who in Luxury Real Estate, the website, luxuryrealestate.com. And um, they have a cool lion with a knocker as their That's main true. logo as well. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, the luxury market um, in, in, in your area and how COVID-19 has affected it positively or negatively. It's kind of interesting in, in, uh, in this area of North Carolina, like our average house sale is 175,000. Okay. So uh, for the luxury division, um, you know, that starts around 500,000 here. Uh, we've kind of promoted that and pushed it up a little bit to um, actually 750,000 and now reaching into a million. Uh, the statistics on that in 2019, there were 65 homes that closed over a million dollars in the triad area. In 2020, we've already had 56 and we have 23 that's currently pending. So if you look at just that statistic, you can see where the luxury market has not been affected. In fact, it's actually increased our sales and production, uh, which is kind of a surprise to everybody. But when you look at where the people are coming from that are wanting to buy uh, luxury homes in the area, they're coming in from up north, they're coming from uh, Florida and they're kind of merging here in the middle. That's the, the hub of the, we call it uh, people that move from New York that go to Florida and then they call them halfbacks. They go to Florida because they think that's where the sunshine is. And then they kind of want a little bit closer back into the North too. And they end up in North Carolina and then we end up selling them a really nice house um, and, um, and they thoroughly enjoy it. Yeah, I was gonna ask you and you, 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 you kind of answered it. Uh, we call them feeder markets. You know, where, where are the buyers mm -hmm. coming from? You know, of course there's a lot of people leaving high tax states, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, unfortunately, Illinois, and, um, and people are, you know, are, aren't happy with uh, what they're getting for their taxes. I, I, know, I don't know too many people that love paying taxes, period. But if you are going to pay taxes, you want to make sure that, you know, the, t the states are, you know, fiscally responsible, and uh, they're not, you know, they're not raising taxes when, you know, home home prices might not be going up. You know, here in Illinois, you know, prices mm -hmm. of, on, on homes have been stagnant for years, but yet taxes exponentially go up, and especially, especially in the luxury space. So uh, that's when mm -hmm. people have a, a difficult time. So, you know, if you, you mentioned uh, East Coast and even in Florida, I got to imagine mm -hmm. you're getting some people from the Midwest as well. We really are. And, and again, I cannot promote North Carolina uh, enough. Um, we kind of have it all. We have the mountains and when we have the coast. And if you look at the cost of living and compare that uh, with a lot of the other larger metropolitan areas, you'll find that it is extremely attractive. And I think that what we found uh, to go back to the COVID thing and how that's affected us, I think a lot of people uh, are now certainly realizing that they can do a lot of the business at home or, or they don't have to be inside uh, a corporate building. And that has uh, given a lot of um, a lot of leeway as to where they can actually live and call home. And so I think we have, I know I have sold a couple of houses uh, recently to people that uh, they want a place to, they don't have to be in an office. And so um, they'd rather have the pool, they'd rather have a little bit of acreage, they'd rather have uh, less tax and um, kind of have the whole, whole thing. That's great. And uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, the starting price point is around 500. The average sale price is around 175. And and doing the numbers real quick, that's about three times the average sale price. And that's actually how we define luxury when it comes to our course, our Lux designation course. Uh, we defined high end homes as two times the average sale price. So 175 times two, around 350 ish would be high end. And then the luxury market, you know, would be 175 times three, so around five, 525 ish. So. Uh, you, you answered a question I was going to ask you uh, already. Uh, talk to me like from a lead generation standpoint, um, you know, without giving away all your secrets, of course, but share with me from a lead generation standpoint, kind of what are you known <laughs> for or, or from a creativity or a marketing standpoint, John Mark Mitchell, what, what, what is something that, um, you know, people say, that, yeah, that guy's known for blank. I would say, um, you know, we do a lot of billboards around town and we've, we've done that um, kind of as I call it as uh, I want people to remember me. I don't want people to call me because they see you on a billboard. I don't want that to be the, oh yeah, you know, you can go out here and, 
and uh, you put a bunch of billboards and then that, that generates the business. But I do feel that it, um, it causes people to remember the experience they have or they call some of their friends or family and they say, hey, you know, do you, I know you closed through this person, you know, what happened and how did that go? And uh, that's, that's kind of a, um, you know, in branding yourself, I think that's a, it's a very, um, very positive way to do it. Um, uh, Gary Ashton up in Tennessee is uh, a big advocate of that. And I know he has done tremendous uh, with uh, billboard uh, marketing. In fact, I think he's the top team in Remax um, nationally. Um, so um, I jumped on that several years back and that has been a, uh, I think a very, very good thing. In one of the things that I do that I think is imperative to building a foundation um, is to get at least like 100 people start with, you can start with 10 uh, people that you've had wonderful experiences with. You've closed them, you've uh, family, it could be friends, it could be new family, it could be new friends, but that you've met in this wonderful business. But you, you can call them at any time and they are very uh, supportive. And they're also, uh, that's my lead generator, if you will. <laughs> uh, I've got it up to about 200 people. Now. Um, and they are the people that literally I've done eight to 10 transactions with um, through people they've referred. Uh, and I constantly am updating that list. It's a, it's a reminder for me to go back through this. These are the people that I uh, have is that that's my uh, lead generator, if you will. Um, and we lunch or we'll do something, you know, and those are the people that uh, ultimately have made the business thrive for, for me. And that, that's who I, I encourage all of my agents to start that process from the day, day one and continue to build that. And uh, I think that that's a, it's a great way to build a foundation that you want. Uh, well, thanks for sharing that. And, and from an outsider perspective, of course, I haven't been to your office, but we've talked about coming down there. But from an outsider yeah. perspective, you've done a great job with your branding, it, using your logo. Your logo is distinct. So when you have a just listed, you have a just sold, you're coming to market with the property. Um, you, you do a great job with your, your branding and it's it's memorable. And I tell you, uh, you're welcome. And I tell real estate agents, the first rule of thumb of marketing is to get people's attention and be memorable. And uh, your, your branding and your logo does that. And you were talking about Gary Ashton, uh, top Remax team. That's funny, um, about a year, a year ago, we were driving down um, through Nashville, my wife and my family and I, and I'm good friends with Gary as well. He actually has our designation. He, he came up to Chicago and took one of our trainings about a year ago. And um, I look over and I see his billboard. So I, my <laughs> wife was driving. So I get on the phone, he picks up, you know, Hey, I'm looking at your billboard. And uh, so uh, th that's, you know, you want to become, if you, if you're committed to your profession, no matter what industry you're in, but we're talking real estate, you know, you want to be the mayor of your town, so to speak. When people are talking and thinking about buying or selling real estate, you know, you at least want to be in the discussion and that's all you could ever you ask. You don't want them to forget about you. You don't want <clears> them to forget about you, you. At, at all. And, and it's always good to, um, you know, one of the things, our new uh, marketing thing that we've got uh, going on is called uh, Let Us Be a Part of Your Story. And we're trying to bring people in to that that's what we want to be a part of. We want them to have such an experience with us. Because in this business, you know, it's, it's not, even though I'm a big advocate of marketing, I'm a big advocate of getting our brand out there. It's about the experience that people have that they really remember the most. Mm -hmm. And that's the that's the experience that they want to tell their friends about and they want to tell their family about and oh you've got to use this person you've got to use this agent you got to use this company um because it comes down to to that the billboards the marketing is just a reminder of the experience that they had and they remember the story that they had with us and ultimately um that brings about a good memory yeah that's that's great Great. What are your thoughts on 2021 uh, real estate in general, particularly luxury, but real estate in general? We might have a new administration. We might not. Uh, rates are great. Uh, you know, if you, what, what are your thoughts about uh, next year? I think we're going to continue to see a little bit of the same. I think we are we've changed from where we were. Uh, I don't think that we'll go back to uh, the way we used to do things where we were so uh, having open houses all the time or having, um, you know, just uh, people coming into business all the time, uh, showing houses all the time to people. Um, I think that's changed, but I do think that the market, because of the interest rates, because of the, what I call pent-up demand, 
uh, where people have, um, because of COVID, you know, they've been at home for quite a while and they've, they've taken inventory of what they have at their house. And a lot of them are calling us up and saying, you know, hey, in the spring, I'm out of here. I want you to have that ready to go on the market. I want you, and so we're preparing probably six months ahead. I would, I would advise anyone that's looking forward to a really good 2021 to already be in that thought process of helping people get their houses ready so that in the springtime, they're first and forefront on the marketplace. And I think that'll give them the results that they're looking for. Yeah, and what's your thoughts as an agent? If somebody, you know, ring, ring, they call you and say, hey, John, Mark, uh, thinking about putting my house on, uh, you know, we're thinking, you know, maybe now, or uh, we've been told now's not a bad time, but we also know that the, the holidays, things are slower. So we're thinking springtime. What, what, what do you recommend, John, Mark? Um, uh, and Michael, I would say um, it, it just depends on the house. It depends on the price range, depends on location, because um, every area of North Carolina is a little bit different at different times of the year. Um, but uh, for more local, from a Winston-Salem perspective, it really, it goes down to price ranges. We put houses on the market and just the past week, and we had 17 show-ins in one day. Um, my seller called me and literally said, stop it. <laughs> we don't want, we've already got multiple offers over full price. I don't want to, we need to get back in our house. And so that's a good problem to have. Um, yeah. And that was for our average price. That was around 350. Um, yeah. But have some houses that we have sold, um, you know, very quickly, that's, uh, it's been a million dollars. I had a house um, just through connections um, that uh, had called me that I kind of knew um, a couple of people that might be interested, made a couple of phone calls. We weren't sure uh, when to put that on the market. Um, we did have an appraisal. Um, and when we looked at everything and um, I took the buyer out there, I mean, we put it under contract um, over what he wanted and um, it never even hit MLS. So it just depends on the house itself, the price range um, and, um, and of course the location. If you were to move to a new state, you know, you said, hey, you know what, I've, I've had it. I, I want it to be hotter or I want it to be colder, whatever. Life <laughs> I'm moving to Chicago. Move, yeah, move <laughs> to Chicago. You want it to be corrupt, whatever the issue oh, yeah, is, what, uh, you know, um, what would be the first two or three things you would do to establish yourself as a top luxury agent in a marketplace where you didn't have a database, you didn't know anybody? Right. That's a good question. Um, you know, I would say that um, I would take a lot of what I've learned now and then and, um, and, and apply it. But I would say that I would go to some of the finer restaurants. I'd go to um, the luxury car dealerships and I'd ask questions. I'd ask them, I'd say, you know, hey, if you were buying a house, is there any particular realtor that stands out? Is there a particular company that you feel comfortable in, um, in promoting? Or do you advertise with certain people because you feel that branding is so good with the luxury market that you would actually um, want to be with that particular company, that particular agent? And so, and then I would watch uh, what they're doing. I'd also look at, and, and from there, I would see um, what that particular company has uh, brought to the market. I'd look at their statistics, et cetera. Probably want to join them and, and, and follow through with, with uh, how they do business, because every market, it, it's amazing. It's all the same, but yet it's absolutely not the same at all. And so um, I would try to get the, uh, the landscape of that and then um, apply uh, myself as soon as possible into doing something slightly different than what I see everybody else doing. I think that's what really stands out in the marketplace is not necessarily doing things totally different, but doing it slightly different. And it's that little detail that really makes the difference between having a good uh, real estate career and having a very successful uh, real estate career, in my opinion. And that's what I would do um, if I moved to another place. Uh, that's, that's a great question, very thorough. Um, you know, I, I'm a big believer. Uh, when everybody goes left, you go right. You know, do the, right. you know, don't do the exact same things as your competition. Now, if your competition is successful, then of course, right. uh, observe and figure out what you can do and implement and, and make something your own. You know, Tony Robbins says success leaves clues. So um, that's really, I like that. You know, really, really great advice. Um, any but words you know, of advice? And not, not, I'm, I'm sorry, Michael, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you know, no. change is always happening. Even if you're in the same area and you've been doing the same thing for, you know, 15, 20 years, um, you've got to adapt to change. So it's almost like 
uh, I've seen so much change happening in the marketplace in general over that time period that it's almost like I moved to a different city um, because we can't do the same things that we've been doing. So uh, it's kind of, um, kind of interesting that uh, we are always changing in order to be relevant in this marketplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. Um, a couple of other questions I have, and then um, um, sure. so one would be words of advice for agents or brokers looking to break into luxury. Stay away. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding. It's one of those things where, you know, I've, I find it interesting. I've had uh, agents and especially even during the pandemic, you know, people are like, I'm going to change occupations. I'm going to go into the real estate world um, and they want to set up a time. They want to take me to lunch. They want to start the conversation about what do I need to do? Um, I always tell people that, you know, you can't be all things to all people in this business. And if you are really wanting to be in the luxury business, uh, just associate yourself with everything luxury. I mean, live it from the office that you have to the clothes that you wear, to the car that you drive, to the people that you are with from that angle of getting into that market. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, I would, I would, uh, I would just say get into real estate and start adding a little bit of luxury at the time, because to get into the point of just being a luxury agent from on, you know, like I'm just starting and I want to be that luxury agent, it's very difficult because it's a, it's a lot of advertising money. It's a lot of joining certain clubs. It's a lot of certain, um, things that you need to be a part of certain degrees that you need. Um, that I think helps you in that marketplace and people are kind of expecting that of you. And um, it might be a little uh, overwhelming if you've got one listing that's, you know, $2 million and uh, the rest of them are, you know, 150. Um, you, it's, it's hard to manage that, but the more you add to that luxury division and the more that you add to that luxury market that you're taking, um, then your market share will, the easier it is to not only join those clubs, but to be a part of uh, the advertising such as who's who dupont registry um you know concierge auctions you know any, anything that you're uh, going into that you want to be um, partnered up with um, is easier once you get a lot more of those under your belt yeah yeah plus you have income right you get more income coming right. in consistent income and you can that invest. does make a difference yeah yeah exactly it does make a difference and um, i always tell people you know, if you can overpromise yourself if you're getting in to get this listing, you know, never put yourself in a position to where you want to get that luxury listing. And especially I'm, I'm talking about someone new breaking into the business and that you start making these, oh, I'm going to put you in the Wall Street Journal and I'll put you in this and I'll put you in that. It won't be long before you might be um, changing professions because it is very expensive. There's no guarantee as to when that house will sell, um, depending on your market. Um, and so you've just got to be very cautious and, and set an intelligent plan to set the, the goals that you want uh, for the, that particular house, but don't overprice yourself. Don't over, um, uh, don't over promise uh, something that uh, it makes it almost impossible uh, to, uh, to perform if that's your yeah. first deal. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great point. Um, last question I have for you, uh, for those broker right. owners, uh, whether it be, you know, they're worth a franchise or maybe a small independent, like you, your company would be considered, uh, what recommendations do you have uh, or do you recommend they have a dedicated luxury division? Uh, I guess that would be my question. Do you, do you recommend a dedicated luxury division? Uh, I, I, I do. I didn't mean to interrupt you on that question, but I, yeah, I, I mean, um, I think that what I have seen um, happen is I've seen a lot of people that, uh, you know, maybe they have a team inside another company and, and they consider it, this is their company and, and they're doing this and they get a team together. And then they branch into a luxury side of that. Um, it kind of can get watered down if you put too many people in touch with trying to get that luxury um, market. And what I mean by that, um, the relationships that you form <clears throat> and that I have formed, I try to make it from an individual thing. And you don't want to um, have to, it's not the same as, as other divisions, but uh, you want to have that relationship with your client where they feel like that you have them first and foremost in, in your mind and, um, and that you are you know, constantly working for them. You make those phone calls, you put that together. Um, usually it equates to having fewer customers so that you can do that, which ultimately is the luxury brand. 
Um, but you, you know, you, you just want to make sure that you, if you're doing a team that you literally set aside maybe one individual that will handle those as opposed to still putting it in the same territory of there's four or five people on a team and you call and maybe they put you over to somebody else and they put you over to somebody else. And that can be frustrating, especially for a higher uh, net worth individual. Yeah. Um, and they really want to do that. It's a great point. Good. Uh, for those real estate agents, brokers that uh, have a referral in the Winston-Salem area. Uh, <laughs> anywhere in North Carolina. <laughs> anywhere in North Carolina. Thank you for that. That's right. Uh, for anybody, um, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Well, they can always reach out. Our website is gomitch.com, gomitch.com. And we've got a new website that's getting ready to be launched uh, that we're very excited about. I, uh, I meant to tell you that earlier, Michael. But uh, that will be in about two more weeks. We've been working on that for quite a while, but we're very excited. But you can still go to gomitch.com and you can call us here at the office. The main office is 336-722-9911. And one of us will take care of you and we would definitely appreciate your business and want to welcome you to North Carolina. Uh, that, that, that's, that's awesome, by the way, uh, about your website. We just launched our new website uh, for my home selling team here as well, Lux. L-U-X-E, LuxChicagolandHomes.com, LuxChicagolandHomes. Love to compare notes nice. with you um, yeah. offline. I look forward to it. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, folks, uh, again, thank you, John Mark Mitchell, uh, with Mitchell Prime Properties, GoMitch.com. Yes. <laughs> and uh, again, a great guy, high integrity, uh, a marketer. Uh, don't think like a real estate agent, think like a marketer. And John Mark is that's a marketer. Right. And um, I appreciate that, Michael. You're, you're absolutely welcome. Appreciate your time. And if you guys have any questions for John Mark or myself, please uh, shoot me an email, Michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, Michael at Marketing Luxury Group. Uh, we will post this, as I mentioned, on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can just t uh, go to YouTube and look up Marketing Luxury Group, or you can go to luxurylunchandlearn.com, and that will just forward over to our, to our YouTube channel. Uh, again, if you want more information on our actual de uh, designation, Lux or Luxury Listing Specialist, go to LuxuryListingSpecialist.com, LuxuryListingSpecialist.com. There's, there's no previous luxury sales requirements to take our course to get certified as a luxury specialist. And that's really for those agents that are committed. We'll work with you, whether you're with a big company, a small company. And uh, that brings us to the conclusion of this show. My name is Michael Lafito. Remember, it's not the market, it's the marketing. Keep raising the bar in real estate and go make somebody's day. Thank you, John Mark Mitchell. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. All right, you're welcome. Have Take care. You too. All right, bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye.